Hello everyone, welcome back to In Attention as always. My name is Kaiser. We're checking out Chronicles of Taldun, the remainder, a game that's developed and published by Square Weasel Studio, courtesy of the studio itself, together with folks at 2 indie 2 Fail for us with the key to cover this game on the channel. Now, Chronicles of Taldun, the remainder is a dark fantasy interact fiction visual novel hybrid featuring mystery romance and the unexpected came out on to steam on 24th march 2022 now according to steam store page text it has elements of romance visual novel text space and story rich like so without further ado hang on let's see. okay let me read more about the game we have pro i provide you guys with more information about the game this is the story of two magi Vin and Ila find themselves trapped in a collapsing tower with all, with their only hope for salvation being difficult ritual. Well, at least that's what Ila tells you. The thing is, you don't remember anything and Ila's story makes less and less sense the closer you are to the ritual. Are they hiding things to protect you from bitter truth? Or are you, or are they deceiving you for some more nefarious reason? Guide Vin's actions to death and beyond and uncover Ila's truth. Are they your colleague? lover or something completely different read between the lines of what they are telling you explore your surroundings for clues and use hands-on deduction to break the vicious cycle and set them free holy hell i just noticed there's features of 50 different endings to this game what the heck and a whopping 140,000 words to explore a world of ritual magic ancient technology and a culture that marries mystic traditions of the Orient and the Ossetan. I have no idea what Ossetan is. Without further ado, let's check out Chronicles of Taldun the Remainder. To understand the whole story, you need to see it from multiple perspectives. While some actions may lead to a bitter end, they will provide you with knowledge required to solve the mystery. When facing a time choice, it's okay to let the moment pass. Sometimes silence reveals more than words. Click anywhere on the screen to progress into the story. If you miss something, you can go back by scrolling up. Once you discover a letter or image, it appears in the gallery. Hover over the diamond to reveal a menu item. Skip through the scene text by pressing the control key. Got it. Story includes descriptions of sexual themes, violence, blood, physical and mental abuse, self-harm, death and suicide. Characters are going through emotional struggle and are dealing with... Dot, dot, dot. Choose your pronouns, they will be relevant in the later part of the game. Who do you want to play? Let's play him. I like that they give you the flexibility to choose whatever you want. For the first time in many seasons, the waves and the wind were the only voices singing farewells to true through through. I waited. I waited, tension crawling up my throat until the colors of the sky changed. The loud stifled, the light drops of wetness fell, pelting to the ground. Pelting the ground. Pressing the lips together, I stood up. Why is it so quiet? The rain was pouring down, soaking through me. Wind ripped at my clothes. Thick, warm, red. A sick, sweet scent. Filled my nostrils, I dare a lick. Metallic, greasy. This is not right. The darkness fell and turned my hands into weird shadowy silhouettes. A sense of urgency gripped me. I hurried to the tower and threw open the doors. Where are you? Endless, empty halls echoed my question. At the far end, I thought I saw a figure disappearing into the dark. Hey, wait! I ran after them after feet pounding the sticky wet stones echoing loudly wait what was your name again i can't remember why can't i remember hardly surprising what i came to a jolting halt and whipped around who said that when you start taking some responsibility my skin crawled i turned and bolted as fast as i could came to the end of the hallway, grabbed the slippery doorknob and barged into the room. Empty. Another door. Nothing. I ran trembling fingers through my hair, 
nail sticking into my scalp then shuddered upon seeing the sticky redness smeared everywhere. I wiped my hands on my clothes over and over harder and harder, it wouldn't come off. Teeth clenched, I pushed through yet another door. Look at you, covered in filth, chasing another childish fancy. Have you no shame? I'm sorry. My voice echoed back as I stood in an empty room, no windows, no doors. Hot breath rasped in my throat, my legs trembled. I was terrified. Exhausted? Why was I running so hard? Was I struggling? It was alright. I was making progress. The only thing that mattered. Eyelids heavy, comforting numbness enveloped me. I closed my eyes and sank down. Down, down. I would rest just for a moment. I would finish this. Seas in every direction endless a diamond dusting of moonlight across the surface above me. I look down into the depth a pressure against my chest as the darkness stares a star then two then a constellation of them glitter in life they approach. The darkness was not bot the bottom of the sea but the body of enormous fish its silhouette filling my entire view. The gaping mouth splits open from horizon to horizon, a deeper black within, approaching, buzzing. The progenitor, fish shrewthrul, comes for me. I should be afraid. Her mouth, now all-encompassing, buds out the last remainder of a feeble illumination around me. I should be afraid. Why am I not? The mouth shuts with a distant clang. A flash of lightning. Come on, wake up. Looking like in the comforting darkness, a rumbling rises and falls like the waves washing ashore. Calm coolness gives way to crushing heat. A blanket of boulders smothers me. Hey, you alright? Do you hear me? My eyes struggle to open, struggle open to a face. Ugh, no, go away. Someone grips my shoulders and squeezes. Still about out of it, eh? That metallic and greasy buzzing sound crescendos and my mouth tastes of iron. Then a hand is laid upon my forehead. I open my eyes again, it's easier this time, but the rest of my body is still heavy as stones. I can't budge a hair. Hmm, feverish but no obvious wounds. You'll be fine. Something went wrong, we don't have much time. My tongue feels heavy and stiff. Wrong? I snap my mouth shut, this is embarrassing. Hmm, maybe you should stay put for now. I'll see what I can do. Hey wait, what's happened? They turn and stride off. I look around, trying to get hold of my surroundings. It must be this is still everything spinning. Why are the books flying? I squeeze my eyes shut again. This is not happening. I'll wake up soon. Sounds trickle in, rustling, clinking, a storm raging outside, a guttural buzzing. How can I sleep like this? Annoyed, I drag myself sluggishly to my feet. An urge to gag rises, rumbling my throbbing temples, tasting foulness in my mouth, I force down the pile. What did I do last night? The incense, incense, incessant buzzing, I rub my eyes again and look for the source of the sound. As I catch sight of it, a cold terror creeps up my spine, a pulsing, churning thing is hovering in the room like space is swallowing itself. Waves of moisture. Brilliant heat spew from within. The transparency, the symmetry, the stench, the singing. What in Laura's name is that? Ships huddle beneath the grotesque thing in the air. As I step around to get a better look, they resolve into figures, midnight silent and still as bones. The white-haired stranger woke me up earlier, stand still. 
Someone else is curled up on the floor, their face of a mask of anguish. The emblem of a high mages, mages hangs around their neck. The image of an eel coils around their arm. Why do I know these symbols? Whitehair's hands are raised in a peculiar gesture towards the wall that's looming overhead. Hey, what are you doing? What is that thing? It looks like the fro they are frozen in place. Hello? No movement. I bumped into something and looked down a couch and a table. Cups lay about like drunkards on the vanished wood. On the varnished wood, pardon me. An inkwell, quills, and crumpled paper slitted that area in dark red spots. Spilled from open bottles and splattered across a mosaic stone floor. The crash in the cavernous chamber pierces the silence. I duck behind the couch, heart pounding fast. There comes a bang, the sound of glass shattering, shouting. A cacophony reverberates painfully from the walls around me. I clutch my ears. A struggle? Please let me wake up already. This is not funny anymore. As abruptly as they come, the, side, the sounds die down. Is it over? Clamping my eyes shut, I try to block out the buzzing. Let this be over soon. Let this be over soon. Let this... Feeling better? I'll let jump that voice. Stranger is back slumped next to the couch. Head lulled a hand to your shoulder. Breath shallow. I turn and see the same stranger standing under the vortex and my mouth hangs open. Why are there two of you? I almost bite my tongue when something drips from their clutched shoulder. Glistening fluid shimmers and evaporates after it hits the floor. You are melting. I back away a step. What's wrong with you? They try to speak but wins instead. Eyes closed, heart bo throat bobbing. Spitting out something black and then resting their head back. They flash a sly grin and whisper. Melting. Very funny. I wrinkle my nose. What do you mean? What is happening here? What does it look like? I glance around the room with a scowl, taking care to avoid the floating thing. Like the end of the world. Another winds. They lift a finger and point. What about that? Do you recognize that? Do you recognize it? I realize they mean the vortex and avert my eyes. No. Devana, no. Should I? I can't resist the shudder. The person stares at me for a few breaths and then bursts into laughter. Um, I glance at the ghastly vortex, profoundly confused with the situation. They are still laughing. Shouldn't you do something about that thing? That thing is a piece Devara. The door to internal torment. They brush off hair from the from their forehead. You really don't remember? I scowled at them and dodged a flying book. You still have not told me why there are two of you. And what about that person on the ground? They look from me to the lying person and back. And start chuckling again, shaking their head. That is you, a great mages. Farseer, saviour of Daran Square, prodigy of the age, and so on and so forth. A failure, a fraud. Tell me, at least remember your name. The words tickle at the inside of my head, Mages Kaiser. Do not with an easy smile, murmuring. Not a slight, and not slight a dire situation, but. What a time to lose your memories. It's almost amusing in a way. Amusing? Excuse me? If I don't feel like laughing, why should I believe you that I am a person over there? I am this person over there. How is that even possible? The stranger shakes their head and chuckles, then tilts their head limply towards an audit mirror meandering through the and nearby. Easier if you go see for yourself. Easier if you go see yourself. I roll my eyes and step over the mirror, to the mirror. Show me how I look, Remit Rangers. I'd rather keep it fake. 
Oh, we have a nice hair there. Is it me? Is this me? Choosing yes will enable additional artworks throughout the game. Your choice will not impact the story itself in a way. No, image of the scatter will not appear again. No, let's speak yes. What I see leaves me stunned. The me in the mirror is the splitting, is spitting image of the person on the floor. I turn and stare wide eyed, then look at the mirror again. Every last detail down to the piercings, which I only now noticing, all identical. Then, just for a breath, the eel in my arm seems to wiggle. Oh, this one. But I blink and it's still again. I feel lightheaded. This is not right. But how? How am I in two places at once? Are we dead? Is this the afterlife? And why do we know things when I don't? How is this fair? And just who are you? They laugh soundlessly. You don't remember me either? Oh, what's their character name? Let me see. I'll stick with it. Ilya. Il Ila? Oh, actually one L. They glance at me eyes wide, then slump lower. I guess there's still hope for you. What else do you remember of me? That's actually your name? Why don't I know anything else about you? An inch nose at the inside of my skull. Hmm. How shall I say this? Eyes closed and lips parted. Their voice is barely a whisper now. My name is Ila. Eh, my name's Ila, your partner. Don't you... Eh, don't know what you did. Found you like this. They push out the words with effort. I lean closer to listen. A ritual must have gone astray and set loose the abyss. Devara stripping away your memories. I did what I could and conjured your heart vessel with my waters. You'd be gone otherwise. The grimace then fall silent. I nudge them. Heart vessel? A beast? Hey, keep talking. They open their eyes again and struggle to point towards the other side of the room, but it flops to the floor. Sink me. They're getting so quiet, I have to put my ear next to their mouth to hear them. Warm breath tickles me. I can almost hear my blood rushing. Your desk. Look in your journal. Find the spell. Circular gate. Black powder. Mantra. Only way to save. No time. Go quick. In the slum. Holding my breath, I wait. A heartbeat like a hammer in my skull. Thump, thump. The buzzing fields, there would be silence in between resonance of torment. I drive my thumb into my temple, crushing one pain with another. A futile effort. Hey, are you alive? I reach a hand to the shoulder. My uh, hand passes through them and I jerk away. My skin crawls at the sickening sensation. Their body melts into a sticky, shimmering puddle in just a few breaths. Trembling back, I land on my butt and clamp my mouth shut to hold in the panic. The ruckus from earlier. There were footsteps, a voice scrambling. Someone else was definitely here. When nothing happens for a while, I allow myself to breathe again. Through shaking head fingers, if they would hurt me. They've done it while I was asleep, right? And if Ila was the only thing stopping them, by now they are gone and you are useless. But now they are gone and you are useless. It's fine. I'm careful. I can find a way to. Oh, the Vana. Find a spell. Something is wrong with all this. And how does someone just melt? Never mind that. I just. I can't just sit here. Investigate my surroundings. Search for the rest. Let's search the rest of the room for the desk and journal. Heart thumping, I rise unsteadily up to my feet. Where could that desk be? Now that my hands is clear, my head is clearing up. 
I can finally see more than a few paces in front of me. The place is a disaster. Half a library's contents are caught by unseen currents churning around the vortex. Books, parchments, translucent globs, and skulls of unnameable creatures swim like fish through the air. Beyond this layer of mess, there are even whole bookshelves meandering in the periphery. I dodge under floating chairs, vases, and paintings as I traverse a veritable maze. A lamp smashes into my leg. I see a limb stretching into shimmering transparent strings and then snapping back into place. I would laugh at the weirdness of it all. I would laugh at the weirdness of it. If it didn't feel like a red hot needle slowly, slowly being pushed through my thigh, I cut out instead, dropping to my knees, then in a blink, the feeling's gone, as if it never was. Realizing that my leg still works, I hurry out of the feel of debris, not daring to come near anything and definitely not laughing. I catch sight of an enormous desk at the far end of the room. Seeing no more obstacle, I ease my panic breath and walk over to it, fervently hoping that the channel will be there. What a disgrace. Save for a heavy book squarely set in the center, aligned with edges, aligned with the edges, everything else, paper scrolls, measuring tools, writing instruments, all are scattered about carelessly. This is just not right. I make a mental note to put in order when this is all finished. Observing the book, I notice a precisely spaced stitch marks along the spine, evenly placed rivets, and the meticulously inscribed Kaiser in the leather. My jittery breath steadies. My head clears somehow, somewhat. This must be the journal. If I can find the spell, I can save myself. I flip it open. Hello there. You are my journal then? Will you help me make sense of this all? The sense of all this? The paper is smooth and firm under my fingers, the smell of it. So familiar, I close my eyes and inhale deeply. Remember staring somewhere deep, deep down, but nothing arrives to the surface. When I open my eyes again, the arcane symbols seem to regard me as I look at them, like seeing an old friend. Written words, soldiers of the intellect, regiment, Array on a planar battlefield written in a decisive hand, my hand. Geometric diagram sigils, maps of heart, of heart and spirit, beyond words, ordered beauty. It must take days, perhaps weeks, to draw each, but what is time to acts of chaos defiance? A row of strings hang from the bottom of the book. Each with an ornamental coin tied at the end. Bookmark, perhaps. I the depths, it is an encyclopedia. How will I ever find one spell in all of this? A scratching sound comes from somewhere to my left. I tense up for a moment. Is it some debris? Or I wait. Another scratch, then another. Something sharp against wood. I swallow, heart pounding. What is that? What should I do? I turn around slowly. There's a set of arched doors leading to a hallway, lined with pillars and dense with shadows, like the mouth of a titanic beast. An ember glint flashes. Another scratch. I squint and crane my head forward. Is that a... The shape slips out of the darkness of the doorway. Its fur is so black that it looks like moving shadow. Its features are sharp and merciless. It walks tiptoed, sinewy, muscles whipping under the fur, poised to lunge. Stumble back, hand fumbling behind me, searching to test for a weapon. My fingers creep around something squirmy, squirming. I look down with reluctance, a lidless eye on the base of a knife, turns its gaze to me and whispers in a wet voice. Cut, 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 cut. My heart 
is throwing itself into my ribs. I hear only its pounding and blood rushing in my ears like a furious tide. I look at the knife and the creature. There is nothing for me here. Not now, nor after. Only more pain. It feels like someone else is doing it. The knife lifts into the air, a dull glint flashing, then it dives down. The eye letting out a wet hiss. A lightning bolt of pain, teeth clenching, I gasp. Then I'm on the floor, blinking slowly. The rushing tide is quiet, warmth is flowing away, coolness is flowing in. Then it's cool. My teeth shattered, I think. Coward. There is nothing for me here. You are too weak to even face it. Maybe. I... Oh no, please. Where am I? What happened? How did I end up here? Why don't I know anything? I messed up, didn't I? I was trying to do something and I just couldn't. Not even close. It's now. And now it's over. All over. I was clueless. Yeah, I was useless. Completely useless. I didn't accomplish anything. But I really tried. What more could I have done? Maybe I should just give up and save myself trouble. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Why? Why did this happen to me? Why me? I'm so tired. Why could I just go to sleep and never wake up? Haven't you slept enough already? What? Was I sleeping? Weren't you? I don't understand. I'm so tired. You will, eventually. Chimen unlock. Welcome sleepy mages. So I killed myself, I believe. That's 1 out of 50 endings. Actually, I thought when we took the knife that we would use it to attack the creature, but now I think we killed ourselves, or maybe we were we were chanced to kill ourselves in that moment there. Yeah. Alright, folks, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end for in attention this episode. We took a look at Chronicles of Tao Doom, the remainder. The game developed by Square Weasel Studio for courtesy of them and to Indie to fail for providing us with the key to cover this game on the channel. It came out today about 24th of March 2022. Now the pricing for each region will be like so 1999 euros, 1999 US dollars, 1499 pounds, 2895 Australian dollars and lastly Singapore, it's eighteen dollars and fifty cents. That's it. My name is Kaiser. Until the next episode, in attention and for more chronicles of Tao Doom Remainder, you know where to find it on the channel. Until then, take care, and I'll see you next time.